Good morning, guys. It's uh, Dwayne Gosnell coming to you with permission on the Helvi uh, Facebook page. And you can kind of see some Technicolor and some natural handles down here. Um, and as the title indicated, um, Helvi Wrinkle Releasers. Uh, there's been a lot of, you know, talk and conversation with uh, people that I've had recently about how I do wrinkles and how they do wrinkles and etc. Um, and what I'm here to do is, is tell you that even though you know you're lots of uh, tools in front of you, I want to show you how to create wrinkles with each one of them because you don't have to have a lot of tools. Um, we kind of collect them over the years and it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it in my opinion. But what this video is going to do is is maybe show you a different take on some tools that are already out there and available and how you can make that tool do another function and you know create some texture and wrinkles. Um, first and foremost, it's not in view here, we'll start with a, a straight blade knife. This is uh, my knife specifically uh, from Helvi. Um, it's a straight blade, it's the Termite uh, One Knife. When I'm doing wrinkles, um, never do I ever typically use the edge of a knife and, and cut in here. Um, one of four or five things is going to happen. We're going to come in here, we're going to you know, possibly break the tip off. We all hold these you know, here, so if we slip out of this piece of wood, you know, our piggies can't be replaced. Um, so typically if I'm, if I'm adding texture or wrinkles in here, it's a quick in and up kind of a slice cut like this and there's no um, specific way uh, to describe it other than it's just a quick twist. And what that does is it don't have that rough edge down at the bottom. It's more of a natural, relaxed cut. And if I want to come out of this same cut and create a fold in that same wrinkle, it's the same way. I'm pushing and turning. So it's not a straight in and a pop because you're going to break your wood but you're slicing it and turning it. And these are shallow cuts. I'd rather make 10 or 12 small cuts than one big one that's gonna break uh, or roll the edge of my knife. And as you can see, put these at the angle there, those are nice, soft curves and creases. You'd use these around the pants, around the boots, inside of your elbows, and things of that nature. So that's what we all start out with. We all start out with our knife of choice. Same way if you have an upsweep blade. This just so happens to be mine. Um, same way it's a push and a twist as you're pushing. And what you do is you create that cut. Now I'm carving on the corner here so I've got a little bit of wood to bite in. So let's say it's a flat piece that's around the back or your spine area. You could do the same thing where you're pushing and slicing and getting that same action. And what you're doing is you're creating that shadow line in there. And, and because you're cutting it with a knife, it's not perfect like it would be if you was using a number nine or a number eight gouge through there. It looks more realistic. So you could curve this up, down, around. Um, it doesn't matter. You know, the main thing is, is we're not just taking a gouge and running it through there to look like a, a I don't know, a, just a, a, a too perfect of a line, so to speak. So there we've got a straight blade, we've got the curved blade, and we have the one now that um, I think Rich had posted some of these in Technicolor. This is the Beave, and what I've created this for, it's, you know, I'm calling it a knife, but for me it's more of a skew but it's also a knife. It's got the clipped out edge here that I choke up on. It's no different than the upsweep knife that we just talked about. It's a push and uh, rolling the blade as you're doing it. But what that does is when you want to create wrinkles and texture, it's not giving you that stagnant or perfect line that a, a gouge would. So same way here, push and turn the blade as you're doing it. So this would be the back of a pant leg or something like that where you want that nice fold in there. And again, you're not using the gouge to just push it through. We'll get a flat spot here 
and I'll show you if this was a, a concave or a curve in there between a separation point where I wanted some some texture you still have to allow for wood grain there it was digging in on the other way but again push and roll that knife up through there like that there let me see if I can get that focused in and now you don't have a hard VTOOL line okay well if we don't feel comfortable doing that we'll switch straight over into the VTOOL because I do a lot of wrinkles with a VTOOL but here's the difference I'm not saying that mine's better or worse but most of us as we start out we look at this VTOOL and we treat it like the arrow it is it points in a specific direction and most of us look at this and we go straight across and we do something like that and it's very uniform and it's very specific what I found lately and I've been doing it for several months is let me find a pencil that's sharpened if I'm wanting to come through here and I'm wanting to create a curve in that magnitude and it's on clothing and it's a wrinkle so I'll address this in a couple different ways instead of going straight down and cutting it as one curve our wrinkles have folds and bends in them so I will take that blade and lay it almost on one side and I will cut a little bit of the curve and then I flip the blade 100 or I guess that'd be 90 degrees down the other way and cut back up here and then I come back and flip the blade back around now what that does is that you've got up and down cutting action which creates less than perfect cuts and when I mean perfect cuts I'm talking about this if you look at both of these you look at this cut on the top and you look at the cut on the bottom this is more of a cut this would be more uh, depicting of what an actual wrinkle would look like because they're not perfectly flat they're not perfectly laying there you know there's one of them's going to be bunched higher than the other so again if we're cutting you lay that blade on the side come back a little bit flip the blade the other way come back a little bit flip the blade the other way and now what you have let me get that chip off there you see you have a more unnatural edge on either side and it looks more realistic than just a straight in cut I also do that technique with um, separation of clothing don't be afraid to lay that VTOOL on the side because what we do when we come in straight like this and then we now have to come back and take our knife and cut into that cut we've now wasted you know that two three five minutes however long it is so that's what I do with a VTOOL as opposed to just what I call the arrow in the corner of your elbows you know we're, we're laying that guy over we're giving him some some definition like this as opposed to just straight cuts okay so that's just a little quick peek on the VTOOL now let's go to the tool that's near and dear to my heart this one is a 3 8 inch uh, soft V tool and it's by uh, the steel is by Drake and Helvey makes the handles and, and ships them out to us awesome tool I love them I use them for everything I also use them for wrinkles as well I come at this the same way I would a V tool in the fact that I'm not going straight in and carving some some curves or wrinkles what I'll do is if I want to create that same arch let's say we're coming you know something like that around the waistline the back of a pant uh, leg that's uh, bunched up I'll do the same thing I'll lay that tool over on its side I'll cut a little bit I'll lay the tool the opposite way come back into that cut and then the same way here I'll lay the tool over the other way and now what we have is we have you know this side that's more proud then we have this side that's more proud and what that does is that breaks up that cut as opposed to just a straight-in cut you can then come back 
do the same thing if you want more depth in there with the V-tool rolling it the same way as to where you're switching the blades where the cutting action is so now you don't have a straight line through there it, it goes back and forth and what I mean see how this is higher than the lower side and then it's exact opposite here and then it's the exact opposite here so it gives you more shadow within a plane the other thing that you can do with the soft V's and you have to practice this is um, there's a guy out there and I know his first name is Joe and, and I've seen him doing this before and I've been doing it for a while I don't know if there's a name for how to do this but it does take some practice and what it is is it's basically skating the edge of your carving tool across to get a roll okay and what I mean by that is I take my pivot thumb if I'm going let's say the pant leg is hanging downward but I want the in and out wrinkles so if I want to go something of that nature what I will do is take this V tool or the soft V instead of addressing it this way and going straight up I'll address it at a side angle and curve it just like that and I'll go back into it curve it again and what I'm doing is I'm skating that tool sideways in through that channel and what that does is it rolls that wood off like so and it gives us a little bit of the same effect of if we were popping that V tool back and forth one way or the other but again same way and I'll go across the grain here you're skating that tool across through there and then it address the other side of it here and I got a little bit of burrs right in there because I went a little bit too proud again you gotta practice this technique um, so let's uh, get my knife here let's clean this off some more spots because you run out of wood quick when you're just willy nilly -in. okay the next technique is kind of the same as we just talked about but what it does is it takes another blade um, this time the blade is is straight this is this is a dead flat blade and it's a push tool um, I had rich um, it's again it's a healthy knife I had rich uh, burn my name on it he was at a show and again I call it the chomper this is nothing more than their uh, push tool that they have and it's the same way you know we could we could go at this stop cuts and relief cuts but if we turn this over if you see the cutting action or the, the angle the angle goes down so when I'm coming across this and I'm coming up through here I'm skating across same way if I was adding wrinkles across or sideways I'm skating across with that blade and what that does is as it pops out it's doing the same thing that your knife blade is doing except you're doing less twisting so if I'm coming up through here I'm going sideways I can go deeper and like I said I don't know the guy's name he also did a video on, on how to use this I know his name's Joe. He does phenomenal Santa Clauses, but his last name is is making my brain hurt. I can't think of it right now. So, and see, we can wrap it right around, and with just skating, I don't know how this is gonna show up in there, but just skating that tool across sideways, we've got these nice wrinkles that are non-uniform. Um, and what you want is that non-uniformity. It's a big word for a guy in North Carolina like myself, but the non-uniformity is what makes a more realistic wrinkle, in my opinion. And last and certainly not least that I want to cover is just your basic tiny um, gouge. You know, these are good for your smaller carvings um, around your wrist, uh, things like that. It's the same way 
but what I do with these is it's just like texturing a beard. You know, less is more, but if you're going in the same direction, less being more is what you're looking for. So if I'm trying to address a wrinkle that, let's go down here where we got a clean piece of wood. So if I'm trying to address a series of wrinkles that are coming in something like this, what I'll do, what, what I don't want to do is just address those in one line. You know, I don't want to come up through here and cut that. I don't want to come cut that, cut that and be done. But what I like to do, make sure this is a VTool, these things are small. What I do is I come in and address just a short portion of it. And then I'll come back, say just a short portion, then I'll come back and I purposefully go out of the line, above the line or below, it's up to you. And then I'll come back here and do the same thing to follow that on around. I'll come out of that line. Same way here, I address a little bit of the line, go above it or below it, make your curve. And then same way here, that third wrinkle that's coming out of there, I'll address it, back up a little bit, go just below it. And if you look at that, with just the gouge, it's a little more broken up as opposed to just one straight line. You may want to come back in there, make it a little deeper with the VTool. Same way, I'm going to, instead of readdressing it, I'm going to flip that blade back and forth like I spoke about earlier. And once you get to a point where you're not thinking about flipping the blade back and forth, it comes a little bit easier. But see, we now have all these ridges and valleys in here. You can come back with your knife. It's just like carving. There's a stopping point wherever you are. The main goal is to find out where that stopping point is for you. I tell everybody there are several types of carvings out there. Um, the first carving being that one where you're just practicing, you're having fun. There's no particular rhyme or reason. You may stop that carving with minimal detail. And it's, you know, I, I call that your friends and family carvings. Those are carvings that ultimately will go to your friends and family and they're cute little little carvings. The, uh, the next carving that you do is probably for, um, you're trying to sell them. So they got a bit more detail, a bit more um, effort, so to speak, put into them. And then there's those competition or, um, you know, you're trying to compete and, and trying to better yourself. So, you know, the, the sky's the limit, as so to speak, as far as how much detail you put in there. But again, when you go through here and look at all these textures we did with all the different tools, again, you don't need one or the other. Familiarize yourself with how you can get in there. Um, Recently, this has been my wrinkle tool um, go-to. Again, it's just a real easy push and twist, and I like the effects that I get out of it. I can go in any direction with that curved blade and go up through there, but it's not uniform. There's ridges and valleys within the wrinkle itself, and I think that's what creates more realistic uh, wrinkles because this is what this was about. You can also use that in texturing, but you know, this was talking about wrinkles only. Um, guys, we're going to wrap it up, but like I say, we um, we address the different tools and the different wrinkle techniques, and, and I don't want to say this is how you have to do it. This is just a, a short little video on another way that you can do it, and if uh, the internet holds out and the batteries hold out, we'll keep doing uh, some of these videos on the different forums. But again, I did have permission from Miss Holly to go live on the Helvy page this morning and uh, show you what some of these tools can do. As always, guys, I hope each and every one of you have a great day and keep carving.